Illustrator is very powerful, it's a beast, and it's also sometimes a pain in the ass. So in this video, we're gonna go through nine of my favorite features and techniques. These are things that I use on a daily basis, and it's gonna help you design more professionally by using the right tool for the right job. It's gonna make you work faster and reduce the amount of frustration you experience. But a bit more zen as well. I don't know what this is, this is more Italian. Hey, we're gonna learn the tools in Illustrator. Shut up, Dan. So first up, we're gonna look at how to create otherwise impossible shapes using very basic shapes. So here I have a circle and a seven-sided shape. And if I select both of these and create a blend with Command or Control, Alt or Option and B, I can then double click the blend tool and we can go and refine that blend. So let's choose specified steps and we can adjust the number. And the shape I'm trying to create is a 50 pence piece from the UK, that is part of our currency. And we can now go to object and then make sure we expand the blend specifically. So now what we can do is if we ungroup this maybe once or twice, and then what I can do is choose from this selection of in between shapes and pick the one that is exactly what I'm looking for. And this technique is perfect if you have say a seven sided shape, but you want the edges to kind of bend outwards slightly. And that is exactly why I created a blend with a circle. Now, if you've ever wondered why your text is not sitting central inside the shape in Illustrator, this next one could be why. Right, this next one drove me mad for years, and I know it still drives some of my students mad now. Select both the text and its container. It could be a circle, a rectangle, whatever you like. And then we'll align these centrally. And if we then zoom in, we can see that that is not central at all. The text is sitting too high. And the reason for this is because by default, Illustrator aligns to the bounding box. So if I throw in a G and select the text again, you can see that bounding box has to be a bit taller to account for that lower G. Right, let's select everything again. And then once more, click on the container. This is going to set this as the key object. And basically the key object won't ever move. And then we're going to turn on align to glyph bounds. And then if we go and try to align this again, you can see it's now aligning to the glyph and not the bounding box. You may be familiar with combining shapes with the Pathfinder panel. However, this is typically destructive, but there's a way that you can work non-destructively and still have the flexibility to edit everything or even just undo the whole thing entirely. And I did this wrong for years, but not anymore, Dan. So first I'm going to select the main body of the house and the door. And whereas we would normally just click on the Pathfinder options and combine shapes together in various ways, instead I'm going to hold down Alter option and click, and this is going to create a compound shape. And what this means is that we can double click this, and then we can go inside and we can still fully edit all of the shapes individually. And as you can see, the shapes are still combining and subtracting in real time. So think of it more as a live Pathfinder effect. So we could do the same for the rest of the house now. And if you are interested, there are some more Pathfinder options hidden there, but we don't need those now. What we can do is hold Alter Option, click on Unite, and we now have that full flexibility. So we can move all these individual shapes around and we can even release the compound shape, which will give us back our original shapes. Okay, so you've drawn a logo or an illustration and there's lots of pieces everywhere, but you just wanna add some flipping color. Why is it not easy? Well, actually it is. There's two tools you've gotta to use and we're gonna do this right now. So here's an icon illustration that I've thrown together with lots of different bits of line work. You can see it's very scrappy, lots of individual shapes, certainly not clean at all. So let's start by selecting everything. And then what we're gonna do is grab the Shape Builder tool. And then we're gonna click and drag through certain elements to combine them. But then we're going to single click in all of the individual segments. And this is really important because whilst nothing changes visually, what we can do now is grab the live paint bucket tool. And now all of those segments we've clicked, we can apply a color to those segments individually. So let's just go and apply some color. You can see it's incredibly easy, just bop, bop, bop. And then with this tool active, we can go and change the color. So let's pick a, Oh, I don't know, a yellow or something. Boop, and there we go. Ooh, nice sound effects, Dan. There's a very easy way to create symmetrical graphics icons and logos in Illustrator, and that is using the mirror repeat feature. So we're gonna do this now, and I'm gonna show you the best technique to use this feature to create a heart. And this feature is underrated in my opinion. We used it live the other day to create a logo for Soggy Goblin. Honestly, don't ask. So anyway, I've got the pen tool. I'm gonna to click and drag holding shift in a 45 degree direction. 
and then click to add a second point down here and pull this out to create half a heart. Now we're going to select this with the main selection tool, go to object, all the way down to repeat, and we're going to choose mirror. And this is going to mirror that half a heart and we can clearly see that it wasn't a very good first start, but it doesn't matter because we can use the direct selection tool to fine tune these two points we've created and we see all of these changes in real time. So we can actually sculpt our perfect heart very quickly and very easily. Now, one thing that will drive you insane with this tool is if you double click to come out, this is now a mirror repeat group and that can cause complications. So if we try to expand this group and then let's switch into outline mode with command or control Y, you can see it leaves behind this weird pox around the edge. So with the direct selection tool, all you've got to do is delete this box. It's kind of a leftover piece from the repeat. And with this gone, it will now cause fewer complications. And this heart is just a regular shape in Illustrator. Okay, this next one is perfect if you've got multiple anchor points and you want to pull them together to the same position instantly. And as you may have noticed, our heart isn't quite complete because we do have that gap at the top. So with the direct selection tool, we'll select those two points, press Command or Control, Alt or Option J, and this will pull the two points together to the average between the two points. So they're now perfectly on top of each other and you can combine them together as you would normally. Okay, so this next one is the best way to create a squircle. Yes, that is a real thing, a combination of a square and a circle. Don't ask me, I didn't make it up. So believe it or not, we actually have to start with a circle. So I'm going to select the circle, go to effect. We're going to apply a warp. And then we're going to go all the way down to inflate. And then we're going to drag the slider from the right to the left, unless you want a diamond shaped one. And you can see here we have a square, but it's actually rounding the corners. This is our squircle. You can play around with these ones down here, but that's kind of not really relevant. And the great thing about this now is we can use the scale tool to just freely shape this into whatever kind of squircle we like. So there we go, a YouTube play button. Right, now this is how to instantly copy appearance effects in literally one step. <laughs> There's so many ways to do this, and I did this wrong for years. So first of all, we need to open up the appearance panel, very important. And then I'm going to select the shape here. You can see I've built these effects. I don't want to recreate them. Just simply drag this thumbnail onto another object and boom, they instantly get applied. Right now, this last one is insane and I did not know you could do this until I stumbled across it a couple months ago. And this is how to apply a gradient to a linear icon, but an icon that is made up of loads of different shapes. And you can get the gradient to run through the entire thing and still keep the strokes and all of the individual shapes fully editable. So yeah, that's a lot of words and I'm clearly quite excited, but let me show you what I mean. So I've made this icon here. It's great. It's black. And what I'm going to do is just apply a gradient. So you can see the gradient gets applied to every object individually, and that isn't ideal. And in the past, what I would do is expand the shape, lose all that flexibility to edit the strokes, and then apply the gradient. But something Illustrator can actually do is if we select everything and press Command or Control 8, we can make a compound path, and the gradient will run through every single shape, but we can still edit all of the stroke properties. Honestly, flipping amazing. And if you enjoyed this and you would like to learn how to design professionally, I've got my full courses linked below. These teach graphic design, logo design, web design, illustration, icon design, so much stuff in there. And of course, you get support from me as well to help you level up your design work as quickly and easily as possible. But otherwise, that's it from me. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.